Hi everyone, you are welcome on my YouTube channel Capsule. Being an editor, I advise you to go through the desirable elements of a good research manuscript. In my previous video, I described about the tips to improve the writing and editing skills. You can find the link here in the video tag. Proofreading is the next step in the same line to enhance the readability of your manuscript. It is very important step before you submit your manuscript to a journal. As a primary criterion, most of the manuscript get rejected if they do not follow a standard proofreading methods. In that case, it may require the support of an expert. However, you can address these issues on your own by employing a proper strategy. A good strategy needs a point-wise enumeration, hence this video tells about the key checklist for effective proofreading of a manuscript. Watch this whole video if you really want to avoid frequent rejections of your manuscript from journals of repute. After watching this, you will be able to understand that how the readability of your manuscript can be enhanced by following the checklist points. Now let's start with the proofreading checklist one by one. The very first point is grammar. Uniformity in grammar should be checked throughout the manuscript. Basically, it is a part of the editing process, but you can check grammar using any software before submission. Spellings are the part of the language, therefore these need to be checked thoroughly. The illogical or uneven use of punctuation can make your sentence senseless. Therefore, comma, semicolon, colon, apostrophe, and many more can be used carefully wherever required. Use of the scientific synonyms can make your manuscript language formal. It is always encouraged to avoid informal synonyms. For example, use of however, therefore, moreover, subsequently is preferred over the use of but, then, followed by, etc, etc. The second point of consideration is the use of SI units. The various types of SI units are used in the scientific reports. For example, degree Celsius, milliliter, milligram, gram, liter, centimeter, etc, etc. In these cases, sign uniformity is very much required. Uneven presentation of SI units is highly discouraged. Uniformity comes with a practice. Therefore, all the units should be checked separately for their uniformity. At the same time, the spacing between numerical values and units should also be uniform. Somewhere you are using them with space and somewhere you are using without space makes no sense. Further, the next point is diagrams or figures. The very first thing you can check in the figures is that its alignment with the pages. Font type, font size or whatever have been used in the figures should be uniform, align and be placed in a logical sequence. As the next point, you may check the recent title whether it is appropriate or not. The figure legends should be concise enough and should describe the actual content of the figure. Labels are also very important to help understand the figures. We cannot describe figures with some large labels. This should be used logically. Labels are used in a fashion that may help make figure self-explanatory. Furthermore, you should check if all the labels are described in footnote or not. Yes, footnotes should be filled with the elaborations of the labels, sample size, data average, standard error mean, standard deviation values and some description of the figure content. Standard error mean and standard deviation should clearly be mentioned as these depict the inter or intra-proof data variability. 
Subsequently, we can check for the abbreviations used in the manuscript. These are used to simplify the denotions of some complicated and large names. So, use them wisely. If you are developing your own abbreviation, keep them simple, unique and uniform throughout the manuscript. Before using the abbreviation, we should first cite it in the beginning under bracket with its real name and use it further at other places without real names. Direct citation of an abbreviation could increase confusion while reading. However, standard divisions like PP, MOL, RAM, ROM, CD, DVD, etc. etc. can be used as such without first citation. The fifth point of consideration is table format. A good alignment with the page. Uniform font size, font type should be important criterion for the better readability of the tables. Table legend should also be checked for its appropriateness. It should be concise and self-explanatory. Appropriate abbreviation can be used to denote the important parameters of values. The abbreviations are used to make table self-explanatory. Furthermore, you should check if all the abbreviations are described in footnote or not. Footnotes should be presented cautiously and should be filled with the elaborations such as sample size, data average, standard error mean, and standard deviation values. A standard error mean and standard deviation should clearly be mentioned as these depict the inter or intragroup data variability. Subsequently, the places of decimals should also be fixed. We may opt for two places or three places after decimal, but the format should be uniform throughout the manuscript. Formatting decimal places makes your data smooth and readable. Now the next point is citations. It is very important factor and hence should require more attention for the authors. It starts from the reference number. All the references should be cited as per the journal's requirement. It can be in the numbered format or author name and date format. It should be ensured that all the references have been cited in the text. For better understanding, you can provide all the used abbreviation at one place in the manuscript. And the best place for abbreviation is after abstract and keywords. It can be followed by the introduction and materials and methods. Further, the acknowledgement should be checked. It is also important when you did the work in any funded project. All the persons who directly or indirectly contributed in your work and not as a part of your author group should be acknowledged after conclusion. Furthermore, you should declare the conflict of interest if any. If you have none to declare, you should just write a sentence, none to declare. Finally, you can check for the manuscript format. It should be started from the title page. In this section, the appropriateness of the title, spellings of the author's name, affiliations and correspondence address should be carefully checked once you have done with the whole proofreading process. Further, Spacing is checked for better readability. Line spacing, space before paragraph, space after paragraph, space between title and paragraph are some of the points that can be checked for better appearance. Once you have finalized the content of your manuscript, you should add line numbers. These are required for the reviewers so that he or she can make a comment easily. 
Line numbers is the review process. It is suggested to add page number at the last of the proofreading process because there will be no chance of increase or decrease in the manuscript pages. These are all you need to look upon before submitting your manuscript to a journal of repute. Incorporate these points in your manuscript and get benefited. Subscribe my channel for regular updates on writing and editing tips. Thanks for watching.